I equate cloud migration as a bit like moving houses. And we've all moved houses, haven't we? Yeah? It's not simple, is it? Definitely not simple. And cloud migration isn't simple. In fact, the simplest element of migrating to the cloud is the move phase. But what defines success is what you do pre and post move. In the pre-move, when you're assessing, when you're planning your cloud migration, you need to make sure that you understand your applications. You need to make sure that you understand all the, your application architecture, the dependencies. Because at this stage, it can be the smallest dependency which can have the most dramatic impact on your business if you miss it. And then post-move. Well, like we've moved in houses, not everything always goes to plan. But what's key at this stage is that you're able to detect any emerging performance problems quickly because the smallest problem can derail any further migration activity. And then you need to be able to prove migration success easily using the right metrics to different stakeholders. You know, I think I've talked enough here. So let's move on to a demo. Let's see App Dynamics in action. So what we're going to show you is how App Dynamics can help you successfully and quickly migrate into AWS, and also how we can help you resolve complex performance problems in a production environment. And in order to help me with this demo, I'm going to welcome onto the stage Kevin Wu. How are you doing, Kevin? Doing great, John. Fantastic. So let me give you the scenario. We've got a company called AD Financial Services. And AD Financial Services provides a whole range of different financial products. And one of the products that they provide is the ability to do online trading very quickly and very easily. And everything has going, been going phenomenally well for AD Financial Services. Over the course of the last couple of months, they're adding thousands of customers daily. But in the last couple of weeks, they've started to get hit by a sporadic performance problem. That manifests itself, and we've all been here, I think. That manifests itself as a spinning wheel of doom. So when certain customers are trying to place trades, they get hit by this problem. So we're going to use App Dynamics to show you how we can diagnose this problem and get to the root cause. But before we dive in, a little, couple of little bits about AD Financial Services as well. It's a modern digital native company. It's using microservices. They've got different DevOps teams working on different features of the application. It's a complex application. So my first question, Kevin, is how do we take this complex application and make it simple? How do we provide a simple view to our sport teams and also our execs? Thanks, John. Why don't we flip over and take a look at our AppDynamics demo environment? So the management at AD Financial came to us and asked us, hey, how do we get a single view of the overall health of our application? So what we did was we created this executive dashboard. And if you look here on the left side, we have our most important user journey. Now, a user journey is a collection of business transactions. So the first one is account home, which allows you to look at your stock portfolio. Then you can research a stock, get a quote, and then process a trade. Fantastic. So what we're seeing here, then, is AppDynamics' ability to automatically identify and monitor business transactions, so these user actions. And we've got them laid out logically here. That's great. Great. And on the right here, we're showing the average response time for some of our most important business transactions. But I want to draw everyone's attention here to the bottom of the screen where we have our service health component. And this is where we're showing the health of all of the microservices running in the AD Financial Data Center on-premises. OK, you know, what really attracts me on this, um, this dashboard, though, is I'm getting attracted to these red circles. So we definitely haven't got a problem with get quote and process trade right now. So when I see red, I want to find out what is the root cause of this problem. So how do we then help our support teams, our DevOps teams, focus and narrow down on this issue? So when we see red, we want to investigate. But here's the problem. Process trade itself is a complex transaction. And it's a complex transaction 
as part of a bigger complex application. So how do we help ID teams get to the actual components that service this request? So what we'll do is we'll jump over and we'll take a look at the process trade business transaction. And what you have right here front and center is our transaction flow map. Now, this is created automatically. It works out of the box, and it's based on real-time traffic. And what we've done is we've stripped away all the components in the application that don't involve processing a trade, and we're only showing you the ones that do. So for example, we start on a web front end, which makes a call to an order processing tier, which then terminates at a MySQL database. So there you have it, all the components that are important. But the next question you're going to ask as an IT team is, how do I understand the severity of this problem? How do I triage this issue against other potential issues? So down here, we're showing you the load in this 45-minute window. We see that it's ticked up. We have about 1.8 thousand calls. And on the right here, we see a corresponding rise in response time, about eight and a half seconds, which is very slow to execute a trade. So if we look over here on the right side, I want to draw everyone's attention to the transaction scorecard. I'll zoom in there for you. What we're doing is when performance deviates over our dynamic baseline, we begin to take deep code level uh, transaction snapshots. But we also measure the performance of every single request that hits this business transaction. And we're scoring every request as either normal, slow, or very slow. OK, and I can see here that we've got over 40% of the process trade transactions are very slow. So that's definitely impacting our customers then. So how do we narrow down then again? And to, you know, how do we kind of find the root cause? So to get the root cause, we want to look at those transaction snapshots. So let's dive in and filter by just the ones that are very slow. So here, we only take these snapshots when performance deviates over baseline, because we don't want to affect your performance in production. And what we can do is we can filter, and we can take a look and dive into this code level diagnostic. So let's take a look at one of these snapshots. And we're brought to a view of just this single snapshot. Now, this is an individual user taking an individual action. And on the left here, we can see some potential issues. Oh, wow, wow, OK. So yeah, we've got all this list of potential issues here. So look, we've got different Dev DevOps teams. And they're focusing on different functions of the application. And our support teams, they're not developers either. So how do we, you know, for me, this looks like code data. So how do we kind of explain what's happening down to the code level very easily? Well, you know, we have developer users. We have ops users. We have DevOps teams using AppDynamics. And we understand that not everyone has that code level detail. So we can just investigate. Let's drill down into this order processing tier and take a look. And what you're seeing now is our AppDynamics call graph view. And what we've done is we've made it very easy for anyone to understand exactly where the problem is. You can see how we're timing every single method call in this order processing tier all the way down to this JDBC call into the MySQL database. And we're seeing here that that took about 131 milliseconds, which is not that much time. It's pretty clear that almost 99.1% of the time is being, is being spent here on this call. And it looks like we have an issue where the main thread is waiting. And if we look up the call graph, we see that there are two asynchronous background workers being called. So essentially, we have a situation here where the main thread is waking, waiting for those background workers to finish their job, which means that our AD financial application just can't support the load that we're getting. Aha. So we've got the root cause. And this correlates perfectly to what our customers are seeing in regards to the spinning wheel of doom then. So with some problems, well, they can be easily solved. But it looks like here we've got a, a demand issue where we need more capacity. So look, AD Financial Services has got a great relationship with, a with AWS. So how about we do this? We take these two components, and then we migrate them over to AWS to give us more capacity, to give us more elasticity and scalability. But that means that I really need to understand the full application architecture. And this means I'm going to have to go and talk to our architecture teams to get a Visio diagram which shows all the dependencies. No, 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 no. John, we're not going to have our architects spend a week figuring out you know, uh, how to create a Visio diagram and show the architecture. What we can do now is, if you remember, I showed you previously the transaction flow map for just that process trade. What we're going to do now is we're going to zoom all the way out and show you something really cool. This is the entire application flow map view. And once again, it's built automatically. It comes out of the box, and it's based on real-time traffic. And so that process trade business transaction is right here. It's just part of a larger application flow map view. But now 
we're showing you every single dependency in this application, both internally with internal services and with external third-party services as well. OK, so definitely this is a pretty complex application here. We've got Node.js. We've also got Java on here. We've got MySQL. We've got MongoDB. So this is great. This is giving me a full uh, view then of the application architecture, its dependencies. But you know what I was saying before? It can be the smallest dependency which can trick you out when it comes to migration. So what about network dependencies? So as, we, uh, as you mentioned, network visibility is coming next month. And so I'll flip over to the network dashboard. And what this brings up is that same flow map view, except now we're layering on network information. We're profiling that connection between each and every service. We're showing you the latency. We're showing you throughput, TCP loss. And really, this, this extra information is helping our team avoid playing that blame game. So we can determine if the problem is really in the network or if it's in the application. Fantastic. Look, I'm now 100% confident. So let's do the fastest migration that this audience has ever seen and take these two components and take them over into AWS. What does it look like now, Kevin? So let's jump back to our on-premises dashboard, uh, flow map view here. And what we've done is we've talked to our engineering team and we've said, hey, these two tiers, these two services, order processing and quote services, we'd like to migrate them to the public cloud, to AWS. So what they did was they went ahead and they refactored them. They broke them apart into even smaller services using Docker. They containerized them and pushed them over. So let's take a look. Let's fast forward in time and take a look at what that looks like. So this is our future state now. And we see that we've added an additional unit here on the right. This is called AD Financial Cloud. This is our application. And we're bleeding off a small percent of traffic from the web front end to this new environment. And we're keeping the existing ones there. It's called the canary release to avoid risk. So let's dive in and take a look at what our application looks like now in AWS. Just a click. We're now brought over to our public cloud AWS environment. And we're showing you that we've deployed these microservices onto EC2. We're using services like DynamoDB. And we're using S3 for storage. Now, the one thing I want to highlight is that, again, this is automatic. It works out of the box. It's based on real traffic. And it was so simple to go between the on-premises environment with our data center into the public cloud environment with AWS. And we're getting the same level of visibility. That's fantastic, Kevin. So again, we've got now one UI, and we're monitoring a very complex application split between on-premises and AWS. And it's one single view here. Look, it looks like this migration has been really successful. But you know, how do we go back to our execs and prove that the migration has been a success? Well, we've gone ahead and we've updated that executive dashboard. And if you look here along the bottom, we've added this AWS component. So now we're showing you the health of all those new microservices running in AWS. But I want to highlight one thing here, which is this network connection. We're able to profile that connection between your on-premises data center and your public cloud AWS environment. Perfect, Kevin. So again, what we've done is taken a very complex application and provided a very kind of simple view. And this means that from this view, you can look to tune, improve uh, performance very, very easily. We've got both of these environments showing here. Look, what attracts me, though, is now the user journey, because all the steps in that user journey are green. So everything's going kind of well. So it looks like the migration has been a complete success. Well, thank you, Kevin, for that great kind of demo.